All right, guys, we're going to try to get this garden down here planted. We're going to try to plant some squash, patty pan, uh, some zucchini, straight neck squash, plant some more cucumbers, see if we can't get us a late summer garden. Getting late in the afternoon. We had some uh, clouds go by earlier. Looks like some other people getting rain, but we're still not getting any. I watered this a couple days ago so it wouldn't be so dry down here and I wouldn't be working in just flat out dust. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing right. What I have done is already laid the rows off. I have fertilized them, tilled that in some, and now I'm just going back and making me a furrow to plant in. I've learned a lot of things from Donald uh, Webb Cajun down in Louisiana and one of the most important things I've learned from him is about planting in a furrow especially when you're in a dry situation or like I am up on a hill if you're down in the bottom somewhere that holds water all the time you know I don't think you want to do this but uh, a lot of people in the summertime this will certainly help out. Planting in a furrow will allow you to water your uh, crops and keep the water right at the base of the plants where it's needed. Uh, if you plant them up on a hill, a uh, nice crown, when you go to water, it's so hard to uh, get water to the roots because the water just wants to run off to the side and run down the middle of the row. It's dry up here. I'm going to plant this stuff in a furrow and put me some uh, tea tape down in there and try to maintain and keep all of my water right where I need it. This is my plan right here. I got some more peaches and cream. So I'm going to try to get three rows of peaches and cream. And we're going to take one row and split it up in thirds, plant some green zucchini, some white scallop squash, and some uh, sunburst hybrid uh, yellow scallop squash. We're going to take a row and dedicate it to uh, diva cucumbers, and I'm going to try to get them up on a trellis this time as opposed to letting them lay on the ground. Then we're going to plant two rows of these Ford Hook 242s, the big lima beans. Uh, I don't mess with the small beans anymore. They get to be too much work trying to do all that planting and picking and back breaking stuff and shell them. Then you get a bean out of it about big as your pinky fingernail right there. If I'm going to do some lima beans. I want to get me a bean out of it. And then I got some leftover straight neck squash. We'll plant that too. That's my plans anyway. I got my trusty earthway planter out. Man, this is a time saver right here. Got my depth set on about three quarters of an inch. Give me some seed in here. Got the corn plate in, so we in business. And with this row right here, I'm going to start out with the sunburst uh, hybrid patty pan squash. Put that. Then I'll go about uh, one third down. We're going to put the white scallop squash. And then I'll put the green zucchini. I drop them in here, space them out probably right now about a foot apart since I don't have too many seeds and I usually get pretty good germination the last time I tried these. And then what I do is just come back with the hoe and just pull a little bit of dirt down on there and get ready to put some tea tape on it. Just want to make sure you don't cover them up too much. You don't want them to have to push through a whole lot of soil. Although I am going to keep it wet, try to keep it nice and uh soft for them so they don't have trouble coming up. For this row of diva cucumbers, nothing fancy. Just put these little things in the ground. Tiny little seeds too actually. Uh, about 8-10 inches apart. I'll come back and thin them out a little bit if they come up right and uh, you know come up too thick. And then again come right back down to the side with the hoe and just knock a little bit of dirt on top of them. Nothing to it. And anytime you're doing some planting uh, it's not all that important, you know, trying to get the spacing of it exactly right. If you put the stuff out here and then you see that it's coming up too thick, it's not a problem. The cost of one seed is uh, minimal. Just come out here and pull that plant up, uh, free up some space for everything else. You never know exactly uh, how your seeds are going to germinate. Sometimes you get pretty close to 100%. Other times you don't. It just depends on how old the seed was. Alright, so here we are the next day. It's about 11 o'clock. Nice and hot out here. We've been picking snaps and corn already, trying to get that stuff inside. Then I'll get to this. 
uh, one of the questions somebody would ask, I'm sure, is why don't I put one sprinkler in here and water this whole garden at one time? And what happens when you do overhead watering and you have a clay sand mix and you get the, the water beaten down on top of it, as soon as it dries, it makes a crust on it that is uh, pretty much like concrete. It's, it's hard a lot of times for the seed to come through. And if I go and water this heavy, and then the sun bakes it into a crust almost like adobe. It's hard for the seed to push through it. So generally you would get your seed germinated, get the plants up, and then you lay your tea tape down. I'm going to do it a little bit differently and go ahead and put the tape down, get the soil moist, let the sun heat the ground up, and see if we can go ahead and get all this seed up. We're looking at about three, uh, three days in a row right now, 100 degrees. Not the best idea probably to be trying to do this, but uh, sometimes you just work with Mother Nature the best you can and we're going to try to make a go of it. On the tea tape right here, I've talked about this uh, a couple of times. Comes on a big roll. I got a piece of pipe through it sitting in this tub right here. And we're just going to, one of the things, uh, one more advantage to having a furrow, see how it is, this tape is going to lay right inside the row. Then you just take your handy dandy Fisker snips and just cut that tape. No problem. And to hook this up, again, this is your tape. See how flat it is? Once it gets comp uh, pressure on it, water's inside, it'll go back to a tube shape. You got a little fitting like this, got a nipple on one end, and this is the side that your tape is going to go on. They recommend go ahead and slide your tape on it, screw this thing down. And then it's ready to join in to the uh, supply line, which in this case is just half inch poly. You get a little punch like this. You're going to punch you a hole in it. And then this right here is just going to fit right inside your hole. Then you're ready to go. And on the far end of your tape, you're going to have a little uh, piece like this, narrow in one side, a little bit wider in the other side. What you do is slide the tape through the narrow side, pull the little plastic piece on up, and you're going to take this and fold it over like one, two, three times. Get about an inch and a half, uh, two inches, something like that. And then you're going to put that inside the wide end, pull this piece back down, and that's it. That's how you cap your end lines. You can put a different uh, screw on type fitting that will allow you to open it up and uh, flush the line if you want to. But this is the, uh, the cheap, simple way to uh, go ahead and cap it. All right, this is the start of my supply line right here going into the garden. You got a female fitting right here that's going to slide into this and uh, attach this right here to my filter. Just push it on there and screw it down. Doesn't take a lot. Remember, we're not working with a whole lot of pressure. And then my filter goes on here. And I'll be ready to hook this up to the hose coming out of the IBC tank. I've already emptied that container up there on the, uh, the first garden. And I'm going to drag it down here, right here where the a block of wood is on the end. Take my inch and a quarter pipe, fill it up set my pump inside of it and start irrigating this stuff down here. All right, I got my water flowing into the tank now. Doing real good. Man, I wish I could drink this stuff. It is some kind of warm. And my pump right here, what I did to try to help out a little bit, I went and put a paint strainer around it. That'll help out some. I'm gonna drop this thing on down in there. Make sure this curved elbow right here rests on the side so the line doesn't get crimped. Bring the hose in around here. We're going to just hook this onto the filter. Got everything hooked up. Fold it over the other end of my supply line. Just put some duct tape on there to hold that pipe together to crimp it. Again, with this uh, T-tape drip irrigation running about 10 PSI, it doesn't take a whole lot to restrict that water. Plug my pump on. Let's see if we can't get some water out here. After a few hours and about 400 gallons of water out here, you can kind of see it starting to take shape now. Shouldn't have no trouble getting these seeds to come up. I think it's going to work out pretty good.
after three weeks this is what it's looking like the corn came up nice and even not bad at all that row of patty pan squash and zucchini came up just fine the cucumbers uh, the first half of the row is real good and then it kind of got thin on the other end down there those two rows of lima beans uh, the germination on them were just so poor I didn't feel like they were even worth messing with so I went ahead and tilled them in and it got plenty of yellow squash on that outside row there it got kind of thin on this end where we had a lot of wind was breaking it off but there's more than enough in there matter of fact on the uh, the far end down there I need to do some thinning on that I've already plowed it one time uh, not real heavy, not trying to pull a whole lot of dirt around it just yet. I uh, kind of filled in that furrow a little bit. I still got the furrow for the most part intact. Uh, basically what I did was went down the road with the, uh, the cultivator, not too fast. I didn't want to pull too much dirt up there. After this stuff gets on up there about knee high, I'll come by and side dress it real good and then put the healers on the uh, cultivator and bed it up real nice. One of the biggest problems with trying to grow corn a lot of times is the wind just blowing it down. If you plant this thing down in a furrow and then heal it up a little bit and then come back uh, when it gets about knee high and really pack the dirt up around that thing, heal it up real nice, you got a better chance of it standing up in a windstorm. For being in the ground only three weeks, this white scallop squash has done very well. You might see a few egg clusters on there from the squash bug. Uh, I sprayed them a little while ago. One of the things that you can do when you come by and spray your plants, yeah, you want to spray them egg clusters up top, but you also want to make sure you soak the lower stem real good. And what you can do is come back in about 10 minutes after doing so, and a lot of those bugs that were at the base of the plant, they will have made their way up to the top, and you'll have a chance to hit them again if you want to. All right, guys, as you can see, it is possible to get a garden going in July, right there in the middle of a drought. It takes a little bit of extra work, uh, certainly takes some furrows, to uh, plant your seed in and then uh, lay your tape in if you have drip tape if all you have is uh, five gallon buckets and watering cans you know whatever it takes that's a good way to get something going without using a whole lot of water the situation on those lima beans uh, pretty much like last year i tried to do some late uh, snaps and beans for whatever reason they like it warm but they don't like it hot and they just didn't germinate very well so uh I know now I should have put some uh, purple hull peas in there or something and they would have done a whole lot better. But going forward, uh, you need to be able to uh, think about this. Uh, suppose your whole year was a drought situation. How would you handle it when it comes time to grow your garden? You have to be able to put some food on the table. Uh, you, it's not a situation where you can maybe uh, have some crop insurance to cover your losses if you're in a drought. Uh, when you're trying to grow your garden, there ain't no insurance company going to make up the difference. you got to figure out a way to get that thing going on your own. Planting in the furrows, conserving the water as best you can, and staying with it will get the job done. So y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.